Jabala Parias. Every little pressure we shift down because we don't know the help of God. The outward man perishes. I may lose my certificate, but I will not sleep with this lecturer to get an A. I better not graduate, but I will stand with God. And you don't know certificates from that man. I know many first class people who are looking for jobs for the past five years. Men don't make men. In this kingdom, only God makes men. I had a friend whose father was one of the biggest directors in this country. While we were still serving, they were waiting for him to graduate so that he would become a deputy manager in Arik. Without experience. He didn't even do anything as touching aer aer aeronautic engineering or aerospace. Not even start the accounting that you say he has business intelligence. But he had a man. Two weeks before we passed out, the father died. All the promises he had sank in the ocean. That was when he started learning the way of help. It was too late. Because the things that needed to be built on his inside to make him rugged enough to defy circumstances, he didn't yield himself to those operations. Many don't know the help of God. That proof that you know the help of God is captured in the decisions that you make. It's defined by your lifestyle. Three people come to marry them and they are checking their, their job, their profession. And then when he finds the one that is a doctor or an engineer or who is working with Chevron, he now says, I have peace. I have peace. You are not wise. He says, It's not given to man that walk into order his steps. Because everything you decisions you will make will be based on information and facts and reason. But your fact cannot define tomorrow. Because tomorrow is outside the boundaries of the information that you have. It's only the spirit that is eternal in nature that can judge the future and tell you to decide now because he has traveled into your end. You choose a man because he walked with Chevron, but you don't know his lifespan on earth is remaining three years. The one you rejected today because he's wearing slippers. It's three years from now that God wants to promote him. Because help does not come from the north, the south, the east, or the west. It comes from the Lord. And by the seasons of his ordination, the windows that revolve over the circumference of his destiny will open in three years. And that's when the angels will be mobilized from heaven. So your life will be defined with him after three years. And that man has 50 more years to live. But you choose the chevron guy because you, you judge by the sight of the eye. You don't know the help of God. The reason you see men go through the wilderness and leave everything that man calls duty is because they know the help of God. It's an ability in God that men have confidence in. And they are willing to yield themselves to those abilities to define their essence. Our light of nation, there for a moment, is they do the work for us an exceeding weight of glory. That's why Paul can go to a city even though he knows that he will be stoned. That's why Paul can be stoned to death and he rises up after the saints pray for him and resurrect him back to life. And then he will stand up with those injuries and he says, let's go to the next city. What do you mean? Don't you take breaks. Are there no holidays in your work? There is a burden in his heart. He said, necessity is laid upon me. Woe unto me if I preach not the gospel. So, so long as there is bread on his nose tree, there is an assignment that must be fulfilled. For that assignment, he is willing to drop his legal certificate and walk from street to street in wilderness and in places of lack and want so that the gospel can be preached. That's when life gains definition. The immortals don't judge you by the number of cars that you have. They judge you by the amount of life you pour on the altar for the fulfillment of that which God wrote concerning you before the foundations of the world. But a man will never go in the direction of purpose and calling unless he understands the buttons in the heart of the Father. And he has assurance in the help of God. And on the strength of that assurance, he can make the sacrifice in the food of life to see that that thing comes to pass. Many Christians don't know the help of God. They think the help of God is what they prophesy on altars. Give. And then tomorrow, you will receive a blessing. It's a deception of the age. Men who know the help of God, they don't give because there's a promise. They give because there is a faithful God. He said, cast thy bread upon the waters. You will find it after many days. 
Give a portion to seven. Give a portion to eight. For you know not the evil that will come upon the earth. The people teaching you the principle of soul seed sowing. They are giving you that principle because they tell you there is a return. But here is a man who is still giving to seven and eight. Even though there is a possibility that the earth will be destroyed. What then is his assurance? There is a God that defines and holds the pillars of the earth. So even if the earth fails, even if the earth can no longer produce seed, there is a God that keeps the boundaries, the pillars of the earth. So I keep because there is a God. That's a man that can give for 10 years. There is no reward. But he doesn't even remember the last thing he gave. For him, giving is a life. So when he gives, he's excited. He's not checking what God gave him because he gave. Not this one. I know there's a place of counting your blessings and naming them one by one. But for men of purpose who have seen the event of eternity, who have touched the powers of the age to come, they don't count those blessings. They are the blessing. Yeah. Uh-huh. It's becoming so difficult for me to teach the word of God because many people they are called, they are, their perspective have been bastardized. So you can no longer teach people how to have eternal value. The system has been so corrupt that men are like princes of Babylon. Everything we do is informed by the wisdom and the intelligence of Babylon. It becomes difficult. They pervert the scripture. They bend the word of God to fulfill their appetite, their proclivities and their inclination. So when men are in church doing so much, they are becoming more like the world. Because they are walking by the wisdom of Babylon. It's difficult now to tell people the things that have immortal significances. You don't know how to tell men now that life is not lived on this side of the divide. That everything we are doing here is an airtime for eternity. They can't hear it anymore. Because their confidence, their understanding have been bastardized. Why would a man go to the cross? What is the benefit? Why would Paul be going to Jerusalem? They said, this man, he said, seven men spoke to him by the Spirit. And they said, do not go to Jerusalem. He said, but he has a confidence. There's something God told him, that he must be a witness to Jesus in Jerusalem. A prophet shows up, carries his belt, and said, the man that has this, he will be bound. Why would he still go to Jerusalem? These are men that have the power to alter the constellation. They can shift the foundations of the world. Because for them, life is no longer about personal advantage. Life is about fulfilling the will of the Father. You come to a city. 30 churches in one city. Because that's the city where there's money. How many churches are in Medjugorje? Why would nobody go there? It's God not willing to reach out to the souls there. Nobody hears vision about Afghanistan. Nobody hears vision about Medjugorje. Everybody starts talking. He's going to Abuja and Lagos. And we say we are men of faith. Bastardized. All of us do things for gain. The Bible says, Woe on him that things gain is godliness. There is gain in God, but gain is not our focus. What I'm sharing may not be for all of you. This one is for the few that are called to walk life from the womb of the Spirit. Some of you, your place is in the political corridor. I'm not talking to you. God will help you there. But I'm talking to the ones that sense in their heart that there is a body to do something in the heart of the Father. For such ones, even if they are in politics, they will die for truth. Those are men that can really move the hand of God and uninstall the foundations of principalities in territories. Why do you think we are praying in our thousands but we cannot affect the territory? Because there is no stature and texture in our prayer. There are no men of sacrifice anymore. But concerning the apostles, twelve men, the Bible says, these be the men that turn their walls upside down. How will they have so much power? What informed the texture 
of their walk with God. They know the economy of help. So for them, life is not about advantage in time. We need to be helped. You don't have men on bodies anymore. They are religious people. Carrying all forms of storms and caricature in the cross. When was the last time you prayed for that which is in the heart of the Father? When was the last time your prayer was not about you, but about God? It's a definition of where you are. A lost generation. A lost generation. The problem is that some of us we've never seen the Lord. You don't know how God bleeds. If you have seen the heart of the Father, your life will change. The Bible said the reason Moses was able to reject Egypt was because he saw him that was invincible. If you see the heart of God, your life will change. If you know how the heart of Jesus bleeds for a generation, you will know that it's a sin to live for yourself. Men that have callings on their lives, living for pleasure. Men that have bodies, they deplete those bodies for needs, petty needs. We live like animals. It's only the animal that lives for his appetite. He say a man that is in honor, that knoweth not, is like the beast of the feet that perishes. Even the gospel, men preach the gospel now for money. For money, the gospel, a hallowed eternal committer to the hand of man. What Jesus himself was doing, that he committed to us. A man preaching the gospel, not aware that every time he's standing, he's standing in the place of Jesus. He preaches the gospel for bread and wine. That's the level that our confidence and our faith have been bastardized. This morning you will cry for the help of God, because many of us are far. <laughs> yeah. I want to pray for a few people. Obviously, I can't go into my message. I want to pray for a few people. I want to make a fresh commitment to God. And say their lives are being placed on the altar. God, do with me that which you will. Those are the people I came for this morning. You are part of such people who come to the front. I'm not talking to everybody. Yeah. Mm-hmm.